kind of transitioning between classes. Oh, here we are. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, <Hi> everybody. <laughs> that shocked me. Okay, sorry, Diane, take it away. Oh, hi, everyone. We're so glad you're here. Um, people had written some interesting things in the chat, what they're interested in. Um, I just do want to say real briefly, because I don't want to cut into the time we have to write and talk about writing. But if you are a faculty, uh, remember that you can also use attending this for flex credit. That's certainly not the motivation of why you're here, but it's a nice thing to have. And if you're in a discipline too that um, is related to writing, you know, feel free with the recording to use these prompts any way you want in your classes. You know, we would love to sort of spread the energy outward to all of you. So once again, we're really happy you're here and we're going to get started. Thank you, Diane. So <clears throat> this is the first poetry workshop of, I'm gonna call it a month of activities, okay? In collaboration between the library and the English department. Uh, we'll be having two more workshops. One is coming right after we get back from spring break on April the 20th, another on April the 27th. Am I saying the dates correctly? We're gonna say I am. Uh, and so if you enjoy today, or let's say you're watching this at home, hi, and you missed today, pop back in, join us again on the 20th, see us again on the 28th. We're gonna have more conversations. The 20th is gonna be one kind of focused on sharing poetry out loud. Uh, and so maybe something that you write here, you wanna come back and kind of practice your recitation skills. And then the event on the 28th is going to be more so um, a spoken word event. We're gonna have some people come in to read their poetry. And we're also gonna have students, faculty and staff sharing their own poetry. It'll be an open mic, open to all in the campus community to come and share. And so please hang out with us, spend time with us this poetry month and make it special, all right? So I'm gonna introduce um, everyone uh, just really briefly here so we can get into the writing. So, hi, my name is Bridget Robinson. Uh, I'm a professor here in the English department. Uh, I've been around since 2015. I am recently tenured, yay. That means I'm gonna be here until the bitter end, hopefully very sweet end. Um, and I teach creative writing in our department as well as composition, composition and literature. Uh, also, we have here Diane Arief, hello. Yes, I just heard that voice. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to say how long I've been here, but I will for instance, 2007. I also teach creative writing, composition and literature. So as I said to Lana in the chat, reach out to either of us afterwards too, if you want more materials. Yes, please. And then we have uh, Roxana Cruz, who is one of our new librarians. Yes. Whose idea this actually was. Roxana thought all this up. Okay. Roxana, can you say, Hey, on the, on the mic. Of course. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here today. I'm so excited that we have Bridget and Diane and Carol on board on this project. Um, this is the first pilot project we're doing. Um, we'll see how it does this year, and maybe we'll be able to recreate it again next year. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you again. Yes. And then, of course, we have our special featured guest, Professor Carol Davis. Carol, I saw you just a moment ago, and I'm my little videos are small now, but Carol I'm is here. also a professor. Yay! Sorry. <laughs> Happy uh, National Poetry Month. <laughs> yes. I cannot wait to hear from Carol. She's going to share some poetry with us and be a part of this workshop activity. So thank you so much for taking time out of your days to be here with us. Uh, let's dig into the workshop, shall we? Okay. So what do you do in a poetry workshop? Well, I think the majority of us maybe in this space have had some experience with it, but for our purposes, we learn poetry writing techniques, we write our own poetry, we share our own poetry, and we receive and give feedback. So it's very much a reciprocal experience. Uh, that doesn't mean that immediately upon seeing a prompt, you write the perfect poem or that the poem is, you know, award-winning and ready and things like that right away. It just means that you got an idea out, you're thinking about something, you get a chance to get feedback, from a collection of peers. And that's really all we are. Even though some of us teach creative writing, I'm still just a poet. When I'm not Bridget Robinson, the professor, I'm Bridget Bianca, the poet, and I'm just a regular person, right? And so I'm just someone else in your workshop space. Um, and of course, you want to have fun. So sometimes poetry can feel very serious. And you could think, okay, I have to get this right right now. It is very serious, a very serious to do. And honestly, it should be all about having fun and you can be silly or serious and take it serious today and I take it serious tomorrow. I have a friend who likes to burn her poetry dramatically when she finishes a draft. 
you know, I'm not necessarily into that thing, but whatever works, right? Whatever makes you feel good about the writing. Poetry should make you feel good, despite, you know, uh, common misconceptions. So let's get into how this uh, workshop will be structured. So we're gonna give you a couple of prompts. Uh, the first round, you have two prompt options to work from, and you can also just write whatever you want. I mean, these prompt options are here to once again, just kind of get you going and get you started. We're gonna spend for this first round about 20 minutes working. And so I know you're thinking, I'm on a Zoom, I'm gonna sit quietly on the Zoom and write, yes. Or you have music playing in your headphones, or maybe you talk through your poem, right? But you get 20 minutes, like a little sprint to write whatever you want, as much as you want during that time, following one of these prompts or not. But here are our two prompt options. The first prompt option is to write a poem in which you define or describe something and or illustrate its use. And this is what I'm loosely calling a definition poem. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple of examples really quickly to kind of to, to give you that. The second prompt option is a list poem, one of my favorite favorites. You write a poem listing the attributes of something or someone, and this could be a literal list, you know, numbered down the line. It could be bullet points. It could be simply you counting something down or just a number of things following after one another, okay? And so there are no, th these constraints are fairly loose. I'll say that, okay? Your approach is your approach. I'm going to show you a couple of examples really quickly. Um, feel free um, if you would like to, um, you know, look up other examples for yourself, that's fine too. But mostly it's about what gets you going when it comes to writing, right? Whatever gets you going, let's start there. So, Here's an example of a definition poem, okay? Anxiety is the title of the poem, very fancy title, right? Um, kerchief wrung like clean sheets ready for a clothesline. I swab the deck, but rescue efforts are in vain. Hurricanes threaten to overtake my levees. Floods come faster than I can sandbag. Stray streams trickle down the back of my neck. My silk shirt is ruined, my blazer is next. I'm left a short fish after the sea recedes, fresh air foreign to my gills, right? So this is just, uh, a poem about anxiety, describing it without necessarily talking about anxiety feels like this, anxiety feels like that, but maybe you do do that in your poem, right? It's really, once again, up to you. How many folks in here have written a poem that's kind of a definition poem before? I can't see the full chat just yet, but I'm gonna check it now. Anybody have any experience? And yes, many great things originate with Roxana Cruz. And the definition poem, Roxana would be hardworking, ambitious, like that, I would list all those things. <laughs> Selma says, yes. Okay, Selma, how do you, how did you feel about writing a definition poem in the past? What did it feel like to you, if you don't mind sharing? For me, it was uh, pretty simple. I feel like when I don't feel too creative and I need to write a poem, it's like an easier one for me to write when it's just about um, one thing and me describing it. Yes, I love that. That's why we like this, these two prompts as the first options, because they are low stakes, right? And they're the kind of prompts that you can use to kind of get you going, to get your, you know, get your wheels turning, get some ideas cranking, and it's low stakes, right? And yes, even if you've only written two poems in your life, I saw that in the chat, yes, this is still an option to kind of get you going, and for fiction, if you are a fiction person or a nonfiction person as well. The other example, I don't know if we have time to see this example just yet, but I, I maybe I'll, I'll get a chance to play this for you before we share. This is an example from a poet named um, A. Van Jordan, who has a poem called From. And just in this, this little opening, you can see that he structures his poem like a definition that you would see in a dictionary or in some type of reference uh, text. Um, and maybe somebody can drop the link for this in the chat if you don't mind. That way it makes it easier to see it. I don't have to click out of the presentation. But it begins into from, a preposition, one, starting at a particular place and time as in, right? And so goes into more definition there. And so that's an example of another definition prompt that kind of takes it very literally. Here's an example of a list poem. This is actually one of my favorite poems. And so I, I just, you know, honestly selfishly chose it as an example of a list poem. It's Harlem by Langston Hughes. And I'm sure we all know who Langston Hughes is, the great bard from the Harlem Renaissance. And this is a titular poem, honestly, for the Harlem Renaissance. It says, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust over, crust and sugar over, excuse me, like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? So in this list poem, we don't get the numbers one, two, three, four, but we do get a list of different things that a dream deferred could be, right? We go through a few different experiences. And so your list poem could look like this. 
or it could be a literal list. Does anyone have any questions about what makes a list poem? You teach this poem in your class? I'm so glad to hear that. Um, about a list poem or definition poem, any worries, questions, or concerns before we get into it? I just want to say that, uh, I'm sorry, I put the link to one of the poems Bridget referred to in the chat, if anyone's interested to click on that, because I know you guys can't click on the slide. No. So any other links that pop up, we'll also provide over there in the chat for you. Yes, and we will be dropping a plain text version of the presentation as a document in the chat too, it's just a PDF if you want to grab um, things from there as well, so you can see it easily. All right, so if we're all prepped and ready, let's write. Okay, so use the next few minutes to write a poem. You can follow the prompts we provided or do your own thing. So let's take about the next 15 minutes or so to work, okay? And you can keep writing this, of course, on and on for the rest of your life if you would like to, but let's take a 15 minute sprint starting now. I'm gonna set my timer over here. Uh, it's 11.25 or so. Let's say we finish or we come back together at about 11.40, okay? All right. I'm gonna switch over to the prompts one more time so you can see them on your screen. I'm gonna be quiet. But maybe the LibGuide link. While those links are coming in, thank you so much. So we've had a chance to share for folks who weren't here, you missed out. Listen, I'm not, I'm going to brag really quickly. You missed out on some amazing first drafts of poems, some great feedback, some vulnerability, sharing. I think you should come to the next one on the 20th. I'm just saying, okay, I'm just saying. Same good time, same good place, same cool people, all right? So let's take a look. So we are shifting now to round two, okay? The last prompt very dramatic. Uh, you can either continue working on your previous work or just, you know, trying another list or definition poem, or you can shift to another poetry constraint called the golden shovel. The golden shovel is a poetry form uh, created by poet Terrence Hayes. Uh, he created this poetry form in um, dedication to and tribute to the great poet Gwendolyn Brooks, who has a poem, uh, We Rule Cool, Seven Poets at the, I mean, Seven, excuse me, Pool Players at the Golden Shovel. And so in that, he took a line from that poem, We Rule Cool, or the entire poem actually, and he created a poetry form. And so the form goes a bit like this. You borrow a phrase from a poem, story, song, or common saying, or even maybe one of those first lines that we share in the chat earlier, okay? One of your own or somebody else's. And then you write a poem using each word of that phrase at the end and or the beginning of each of your lines, okay? So you can either write a poem where the end of each of your lines ends with one of those words. So when you go down the list at the end of your poem, you see that phrase appear again or at the beginning or both. Okay, and here's a quick example. This is one I just made up very quickly. Forgive me. Okay, uh, the phrase is mama always told me be careful. Right. How did you know mama that you'd birthed a child who would always be afraid of the dark and need to be told that the boogeyman wouldn't come for me if I kept my nightlight on. And if he did appear, then just be sure to say my prayers loud enough to scare him if he wasn't careful. And so as you can see at the end of each line, mama always told me, be careful, right? And so we have another example here. Um, this one is actually a double golden shovel because Patricia Smith, the poet, is just incredibly ambitious and does everything doubly good every single time, okay? Uh, Roxana is going to drop the link to this poem. And we, there's also audio for both of the links that we've dropped. If you take a look, the Academy of American Poets is really great about having audio, but you can hear her reading this in her beautiful Patricia Smith raspy voice. And A. Van Jordan, just that first poem that we shared. The voice. I mean, I hope we get a chance to play it at the end here, but um, this is another example of one that you can check a look at. It's a little bit longer though, more involved, but the poem could be short, all right? Has anyone in here ever written a golden shovel before or heard of a golden shovel before? Anyone ever heard of that before? I see a couple head nods. Carol says yes. Roxana says not, not yet. First time? Yay, I love that. 
I love that. Terrence Hayes is an American, amazing poet, so is Gwendolyn Brooks. This is a poetry form that is modern. It's created in our recent history by a modern and contemporary poet, and it's living and breathing and growing every day. And if you write one today, you are adding to that legacy of that poem, poetry form. So thank you so much. For that. Yes, Excuse Diane. Uh, Lauren wants to know if we can go back to the previous slide yes. to just get how to write a golden shovel poem. Let me go back. There you go. And I'll also have this showing while, while you work as well. And um, have that there for you. All right. And it can be any line. Yes, it could be any line. It could be a line you made up. It could be a line from a poem that you love. Again, one of the lines from maybe one of your own poems or the first lines we've shared here from a song, a TV show. Any line will work. Any number of words would work. Absolutely. And the challenge is, what can you squeeze in kind of in between those lines, right? Yes, this is the one that I've heard often in my family. Be careful, Bridget, be careful. Absolutely. I'm gonna skip forward two, two steps here just because we have, I have the prompts also here. So we're gonna write for the next few minutes. We're gonna take again about 15 minutes for that. Um, here, here are the prompts one more time. It is, let's say it's 12.02. Uh, so let's work until about 1217-ish, okay, uh, working on this one. This might take a bit more time. So maybe all you get a chance to do right now is pick your line and kind of get those first kind of feelers out. Um, and then you work on this a little bit more later, okay? It's a more involved poetry form. But you could, of course, keep working on definition or list forms or do whatever you want to do. Because listen, it's your 15 minutes to use. And sometimes that's all you have is 15 minutes to write something. So. Let's go ahead and start that now. I'm gonna grab that open. And so we just heard from some lovely pieces, golden shovels, some people's first ever golden shovel. Sounds like both people actually first ever golden shovel. Third poem ever. I mean, we're really, we're rocking. Okay, some great first lines, great last lines. If you missed the chance to write a golden shovel with us, never fear, you can write a golden shovel on your own, okay? We're gonna have uh, some documentation for you on the lip guide for this event. You can grab that, take a look at golden shovels on your own time and work on one and maybe bring one to us on the 20th to our uh, read aloud event or bring one to us during our spoken word poetry extravaganza on the 27th, okay? So uh, make sure you're checking for those links. I have the pleasure right now to bring to you one of my colleagues, okay? A famous person who works at SMC. Yes, you are famous, Carol. Uh, I wanna bring to you Carol Davis. Carol Davis is the author of Below Zero, uh, published in 2023. That's this year, you all, okay? Uh, because I cannot leave this body. Look at that, that line. That could be a golden shovel line. Oh my goodness. From 2017, Between the Storms, from 2012. She won the 2007 T.S. Eliot Prize for Into the Arms of Pushkin, Poems of St. Petersburg. Her poetry has been read on National Public Radio, the Library of Congress, and Radio Russia. Twice a Fulbright Scholar in Russia, she taught in Siberia, winter 2018, and teaches at Santa Monica College, California and Antioch University, Los Angeles. She was awarded a Fulbright Specialist Grant for Siberia in 2020. That it was postponed because of COVID restrictions is now canceled, but she won it anyway, okay? Because she is amazing. And so I'm gonna stop the share here so we can see her and have this on full video, live and in color. I bring to you Carol Davis. Thank you. <clears throat> You can see I'm blushing here. Um, so I'm going to read a poem from the new book. Uh, it just came out, actually. It's called Below Zero. Uh, the cover was painted by a friend who uh, teaches at UCLA. So it's centered. It has lots of themes in it, but there are poems about Siberia. So I'm going to read a poem called An Answer for Everything. And it kind of moves from Siberia to Los Angeles an answer for everything. Only my second time in Siberia, so I cannot say if the minus 18 today is usual or not. All around, people walk to buy groceries or wait for the morning tram. Sidewalks not brushed clean these past eight days, the official New Year's holiday. A sheen of ice slicks the walkways like a child's face in need of scrubbing. 
I have been thinking about string theory, how to explain the universe. Yes, the pull of gravity, but it's opposite too. An electromagnetic force attracting, then repelling. If only the world were so easily explained. Last year's rains in California, followed by an explosion of new growth in the forests. We marveled at the green stubble on the hills of the Sepulveda Pass, usually parched a dull brown. Reassured ourselves the drought was over, but summer fires more ferocious than ever tore through cities usually inured, then intensified in late fall, persisting even into winter months. 16 hours into the future on the other side of the world, I gaze into the dark of a Siberian morning. My phone pings with photos of home where rain is unleashing hillsides. The earth, long parched, gives way, pulling down houses and everything in its path. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. Oh. Thank you. I'm 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 just quiet now. This is unusual for me. That was amazing, Carol. Thank you. And once again, the book is below zero, correct? Yep. Available yep. everywhere. I hope. Yeah. I just got <laughs> back from reading in Michigan. So uh, that was fun. Do you mind sharing where we can see you again, reading your poetry, maybe out in the world or hosting uh, workshops? Sure, I can, I'll send you, I've got a bunch. I just read it beyond Baroque. I'm reading it Claremont and then I'm reading in Ventura. I'm reading in Boise. I'm reading all over now, so yeah. We love a tour. We love a tour. We love a tour. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> So in the interest of time, I was going to share, but I want to make sure people can get out of here to their next classes and things very quickly. But I do want to share with you uh, flyers for our next event. And so Roxy's going to drop the links for us once again in the chat. Uh, we are coming back together on uh, the 20th, Finding Your Voice Poetry Out Loud Workshop. I'll be hosting again. Yes. Okay. I'm a poet who shares work out loud all the time. I also have one of our other colleagues with us, Regis Peoples, also a poet, an amazing artist. That'll be from the same time, 1115 to 1235, right here on Zoom. Make sure you register for that. Okay. And come on and see us again. We're going to write a little bit and read a little bit and talk a little bit and have a good time. And then on the 27th, we'll have the big drop the mic poetry event, spoken word. Please come out as just an audience member or as someone who wants to share. We would love to hear from all of you again during that event. So you got a couple of weeks to, you know, practice a bit, maybe come to the 20th workshop, okay? Get some chops, figure out your best methods for sharing your work out loud. And then come back on the 27th and share that work with us. And if you are an instructor or staff member, please remember to share this with your students. You never know. There are poets hiding amongst all of us, okay? Speaking of which, if you enjoy creative writing and you're watching this video right now, you're on the video right now, don't forget, we do have creative writing classes here at SMC taught by some very familiar faces, I will say, if you've been watching today. Uh, we have two sections right now, 30A and 30B, two different types of classes. Beginning creative writing is transferable to UCs and CSUs. The only prerequisite is English 1 and English 30B, advanced creative writing, also transferable. It's only prerequisite being 30A. So please see if you can join us for the uh, summer and fall. There should be some summer sections of creative writing, but I know for sure there's some fall sections. So come on out, join us. We'll have more information about exactly which classes are available in the fall, maybe the next time you see us, okay? So I will see you there. Thank you all so much for joining us. It's been great having you. I've been Bridget Robinson, aka Bridget Bianca. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Keep writing. Thank you so much.